Our first question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Devin, first off, how did uh, how did you guys find the news about the uh, postponement, and and what were the emotions like? Uh, we figured out through Twitter, and uh, I mean, obviously, we all was upset and like we wanted to play, but I mean, I guess it's COVID, so I mean, we kind of expected it, but obviously, we didn't want it to happen. Was there was there some of that with Baylor having paused their practice a week or earlier the week before? Did you, uh, yeah. did you kind of anticipate that this might might happen? Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, we kind of anticipated like that Friday because we heard that they had some quarantine. They was kind of like tracking who was about, around who and whatever. But we kind of we just stay focused and we planned on plan, but we knew it could possibly happen. What has this week of practice been like? What's the uh, the emotion been like? I mean, everybody's ready to play, so we all hyped up, just getting ready for Iowa State and uh, practicing our butts off. Thanks, bud. Our next question is going to come from Jason Elmquist from the Stillwater News Press. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, obviously, I know the coaches usually take the approach of, uh, you know, control what you can control. But how, how disappointing or frustrating is it the fact that you guys are the ones taking control and, and doing your part with COVID, but you've now had Tulsa and Baylor. It's it's their programs that are the ones that are preventing you guys from playing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating for sure. And a lot of people are like, we, we want to play. We want to play bad. Everybody's in the locker room like, dang, why can't we just play? And they figure out what they got to do and just find a way to play. But, I mean, it kind of happens. And now we're just focusing on the next team we play. How, how difficult is that transition midweek of suddenly going from preparing for Baylor to now preparing for Iowa State? I mean, it's not, not, it's not that bad because the coaches, they was on it like that. The next day we came in, they already knew – what like the game plan? They already had the sheet ready, sheets ready for us to practice, and it kind of like it was like the next day, we're on to the next thing. Do you, do you think having a, basically a few extra days now to prepare for, for Iowa State might might ben, be beneficial for you guys now? Well, for sure, it'll be beneficial. I mean, we're just focusing on stopping the quarterback and the tight ends, and just finding a way to win. Thanks. Our next question is going to come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Devin, how's it going? I'm doing good. Uh, when you guys suit up for Iowa State, it will have been, you know, 20, 21 days, 20, 21 days since your last, you know, competition. How does that factor in, you know, mentally just going in the middle of a season, going that many days without, without competing? Uh, yeah, we, uh, Coach talked to us about it, and uh, we basically was like, we're going to go out this week work on the mental things, and then next week we'll ramp it up and get used to hitting each other. Basically, just focus on getting everything perfect. So when we go out there, all we have to do is just be ball players and just kick it back in. Now, just having this extra week, you know, one of the conversations with Gunny has been about the conditioning, that it took you guys a little longer to get conditioned because of everything happening with COVID. Do these – does this extra week – I'll coming off your bye week plus this week give you guys more time to, to get that conditioning in? Oh yeah, for sure. We just got we just got done doing conditioning, so we get it in for sure. Appreciate you. Our next question is going to come from Chris Becker from the Ocali. Go ahead, Chris. Devin, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. All right. First question, you know what what have you learned as a unit and then as a team through these first three games? I mean, we learned basically as a unit is uh, that we can easily be the best defense in the world and that if we just do our jobs and listen to coach and run the right game plan, we could easily shut teams out. And uh, basically as a team, we realized that, I mean, we can play with any team basically and we have a, a great offense, great QBs, great receivers, a great running back crew and a great defense. So we just have to put it together and win. All right. And, you know, how important are these next couple of weeks with uh, Iowa State and Texas to help this team down the stretch with some of these harder competitions still yet to come? I mean, we're just going out there every day. Just we got to we gotta keep the upper hand. We got to come out there like it's O and O. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we don't want nothing given to us. We want to earn everything, basically. Awesome. Thank you, Devin. No problem. All right. And our final question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Scott. Devin, you brought up the uh, the tight ends at, at Iowa State, and I'm sure that's something that uh, that you're uh, a big part of in in trying to keep those guys under control. What's uh, what's the big challenge with those guys? 
I mean, they're long. I mean, they use their tight ends and everything. They go in 11 and 13 personnel and 12 personnel a lot. So we're just working on basically just being rough with them and making sure they don't get the balls in their hands. Does it help that you got some uh, some some good tight ends around uh, on, on on your squad to uh, to go up against? Oh yeah, for sure it does. I mean, we have six seven Jelani, so I mean, they don't get no taller than that to be honest. And Logan and them, so it helps a lot. All right, thanks, Devin. Appreciate it, Devin. We actually, I'm sorry, we had a late question come in here from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali. So Ryan, go ahead. Thanks, Gavin. Sorry, I, I thought I had my hand raised, but apparently I forgot to press it. But um, so but we're gonna Devin, make you, we're gonna make we're gonna make you take a lap after this. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, give me okay. Coach Glass. Uh, I need some conditioning. So, um, Devin, so you and LD Brown got here the same year in 2016, and so you guys have been around the program for the same amount of time. Um, but so LD, he he's really made some strides this year, obviously with just his overall play. I wanted to know what you've seen from him and what differences you've seen from years past to this year. I mean, it's the same LD. I think he just, he's just taking it more serious because he knows Chuba, he's, he's, he can't play every down. So it's like, you know, he has to go in there and produce the same, if not better, so he can keep things rolling on the offense because obviously he can't be in every play. So, I mean, his mindset has changed a lot and he's been working at it all summer, uh, working on it. Is he um, is he a handful to deal with in practice? Oh, for sure. He's a he's a drama queen. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that, but he, that's him. That's LD. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Devin. Before we let you go, uh, is there anything that that you wanted to talk about? Now, kind of that we have the group here together. Anything? Any messages that you wanted to share? We're just looking to play. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we just want to play and just on to the next team and beat the next team and just win it all. All right. Well, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us here a little bit. Yeah. All right. Take care. Have a great night. Sure. Thanks. Hunter, how are you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good. Doing well. Thanks for coming over here and hanging out with us here for a little bit. Of course. Hey, before you get going, I don't know anything about Tuscola, Illinois. How's, how's a kid from Tuscola end up in Stillwater? How'd that work out? Uh, a whole lot of luck and a lot of good people. Was there anybody in particular who brought you in? Um, so my defensive coordinator's brother-in-law, I believe, uh, was an old offensive analyst here. So he put me in front of Coach Henson back a few years ago, and that's how I kind of got in contact with him. How big, how big is Tuscola anyway? Uh, a little less than 5,000 people. Uh, who's the most famous person from Tuscola? Is it you? No. Uh, say like Fred Wakefield. He was an uh, old Illini player that had a few years in the league. Okay, well, very good. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a handful of media folks on the call here with us. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll just kind of bring them in one by one. So our first question is going to come from Chris Becker from the Ocali. Go ahead, Chris. Hunter, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. All right, so through these first three games, you know, what's something you've, you've learned as a unit and then as a team? I think as a unit, we've learned to kind of slow down the defense, work together, and just trust each other. When the defense is moving around a whole lot, things can get confusing, and we just have to trust each other to do each individual piece, and everything comes together when we do. And then, as a team, I think it's similar. We've just we've learned to trust each other. We trust the defense to go out and get stops, and they have to trust us to go out and put points on the board. All right, and then going into these next couple games with Iowa State and Texas, uh, two tough opponents. You know, what's something you guys want to build off of? and uh, keep, you know, to help you guys going forward to some of the tougher competition? I mean, you need to build off the defense, obviously, holding Kansas to such few points. And then we put quite a few points on the board versus Kansas. And we just need to keep doing the same thing and adding off of that. Awesome. Thank you, Hunter. I appreciate it. Sure. Our next question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Scott. Hunter, take us back to uh, to the Tulsa game. Obviously, you don't want to see one of your teammates go down, but uh, you had to uh, flip the switch and 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 come in right away. What was, uh, what was what was kind of the emotional roller coaster you went through that day? Uh, those first couple drives were really nerve wracking. Um, I talked about slowing down the game, and I couldn't do that for the life of me when I first went in. And uh, I'm sure you all saw the video of Josh kind of ripping into us a little bit at halftime, getting us motivated and, motivated, and that's 
really when it started to click that I just had to slow it down, trust, trust all the practices we had, trust my teammates, and that's when I started to get the nerves under control. And what, uh, where do you feel you've, uh, you've improved since then and, and as, a, as a group, uh, as an offensive line, uh, what's been going well for you guys? Uh, personally, I just, I've learned to trust the guys, especially having Tevin and Ryan next to me. I mean, any mistake I make, those two guys have a lot of experience and they've been covering for me. And I just, I've just, a, I've learned to play hard and uh, any mistakes I make, like I can fix it and they're going to help me to pick that up. And then as a unit, we've just, we've learned to play together, uh, focus on getting vertical movement on the D line and watching backer flow and just getting our job done. Thanks, Hunter. Our next question comes from Ryan Breeden from the Ocali. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Hunter. Thanks for uh, taking some time out to chat with us today. Um, so first, I wanted to ask, you guys basically have had, are going to have what essentially is two bye weeks in a row. Um, how do you guys stay focused uh, during basically what's going to be about three weeks of no games? I mean, it's not easy, but – I think we kind of – we're going three-day practices and then two days off. So we know when we go into those three days, we just have to go full speed, go hard into practice. I mean, uh, ice tub where we can, keep our legs fresh, and just we, those three days are really important to get ready for Iowa State and Texas after them and whoever's next. And then we get two days off, so we take that time to kind of clear our minds, relax, and we just – we got to flip the switch. My next question for you is about your running backs, but more specifically, L.D. Brown. Um, L.D. has been really good this year, and I just wanted you to describe what you've seen from him, what changes you've seen from him from last year to this year. Uh, obviously, I mean, I've seen the same thing you guys have. He looks really good. He's running the ball hard. But, I mean, he's one of the guys in the locker room. He really keeps our spirits up. He's always joking around, and he's just one of those guys that you really want to play hard for. Thanks. Our next question is going to come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Hunter, after the performance the offense had against Kansas, putting up 47 points, what's the confidence level uh, for the offense now that, you know, things got rolling last week or two weeks ago? Uh, our confidence is definitely up. Um, there's still a whole lot that we have to work on. And, I mean, we can put more points up than that. But finally – breaking that breaking that barrier and putting some real points on the board it felt good and it kind of showed us that we are able to do it especially this year and it really gets us rolling did that help you get comfortable individually being able yeah. to, to be in a game like that yeah absolutely did. appreciate you all right and our final question is going to come from scott wright from the oklahoma go ahead scott hunter what is the intensity level of practice has been like this week um, so, I mean, especially coming from the offensive line, we kind of have to set the intensity ourselves. We can go out flat and not have a great practice, or we can get jacked up before practice and really crank up the intensity. And I'd say, especially yesterday and today, the intensity has been really high. We're all excited. We're bouncing around and we're having a lot of fun with it. So it's up. What challenges does the Iowa State defensive front pose for you? Uh, they're really good. They have a, big defensive end and a stout nose guard. And then they have a bit lighter defensive end that's a really good athlete. And we just need to focus on getting double teams and working up to linebackers that fit really hard. All right, good stuff. Thanks, man. All right, Hunter, before we wrap it up, is there anything that we missed that maybe you wanted to talk about while we've got the group together here? I don't think so. All right, well, know how much you're appreciated. Thank you so much for coming here and hanging out a little bit. Thank you. All right, have a good night. Thanks. And thanks to everybody for participating. We always appreciate you.